Hi. Um, we're going to get started now. Welcome to the talk. Uh, we're going to go through creating a first Bosch release today. Uh, but first, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Rebecca on the left there. I've been on the Bosch team for just over a year, and I'm a core contributor. And I work out of the Toronto office with Pivotal. Hi, I'm Peter. I also work in the Toronto office at Pivotal. I work on Gemfire, which is also known as Apache Geode. And I've been using Bosch for up to three years. So a quick overview of our session today. We're going to do start off with a short review of what Bosch is and what uh, Bosch deployment is. We're going to mostly be talking about the building blocks of a Bosch release. And at the very end, we're going to end it off with a Bosch deployment and a couple other interesting Bosch features that you can take advantage of. So can I get a show of hands? Who here has done a Bosch deployment before? OK, almost half the room, almost the whole room. OK, cool. Um, for those of you who haven't, um, we're going to go over what a Bosch deployment is. But first, what is Bosch? Bosch is a project that unifies release engineering, deployment, lifecycle management of small and large scale cloud software. So let's unpack this a little bit. The first part is release engineering, which is the practice of gathering the software that you want to make available for people, people to consume. The second part of it is deployment. So now that you've gathered your software, how do you put it somewhere so people can start using it? And lastly, lifecycle management. How do you, once you have your software in a place where people can access it, how do you start it? How do you stop it? How do you upgrade it? And throughout this presentation, we're going to go through each one of these components. So a Bosch deployment starts off with the Bosch director, which is just a VM running Bosch software. And it has a special ability to create VMs. It's connected to a CPI, a cloud provider interface, like Google or Amazon or OpenStack. And it creates VMs. And when it does that, we call those Bosch deployments. So one or a set of VMs is a Bosch deployment. You need to tell Bosch what you'll be running on these VMs. And there's two parts to that. The first part is your code. So what you want to make available on your deployment. And we like to call that the Bosch release, which is what today's whole talk will be focused on. The second part of this is the OS. And we call that the Bosch stem cell. And to create a deployment, you need these pieces. You take your Bosch release, Bosch stem cell, you upload it to your Bosch director, and it takes that and creates a Bosch deployment. In that, you have your code running on the OS, running on one or a set of VMs. To, do, to help with all of this, we have the Bosch CLI. It will manage the movement of software. And as you see today, it also does scaffolding. So throughout the presentation, we'll use the Bosch CLI to help us scaffold out all the pieces we need for Bosch. So a quick overview of the building blocks of a Bosch release. We have blobs, like binary large objects. You have your source code. You have packages. And lastly, you have jobs. And with all of these four pieces, you have a complete Bosch release that is possible to deploy. Hey, thanks, Peter, for bringing us through how basic Bosch works. So of course, with any kind of 101 talk where we make a thing for the first time, we'll go with Hello World. So what we'll do is we'll make a, a new Bosch release called Hello World. So we'll create a directory for the contents and get into it. And then we'll initialize the release. So this is uh, what Peter mentioned, where the CLI is used for scaffolding as well. So you can say Bosch init release, and this will create a bit of structure to this directory with some files. So blobs, packages, and source, those things Peter just mentioned, uh, how do those come into play? So blobs uh, is what is in a release, um, and they're usually the binary large objects that are used for runtime or compilation dependencies. These are things that are referenced to. They're not necessarily checked in to your release. They're not really part of your source, source code. Source code, though, is your code. So this is the code that you're interested in getting into a deployment, making available to your users. And packages wrap around source code and blobs to instruct Bosch as how to install or compile or just manage those pieces of code. And this is the interface that you use to uh, make your make your release deployable. 
So first, let's add some source code. This will go in the source directory. For us, we're just going to make a tiny uh, server in Golang, which responds with the word yo every time you send any request to it. I just kind of wanted to move away from hello, so I'm going to use yo instead. So now we're building up our release. On the left here, we'll show the file structure you'll be building. And on the right is our kind of visual representation. So, so far we have this hello.go, which is our tiny little Golang server. Okay, so we mentioned blobs before. These are referenced things that you would include in a release, but they're not necessarily part of your source code. These are used to compile your source code, or maybe it's a, a program like MySQL you're putting in a release. So for us, we're gonna configure a small blob store, uh, what we would call uh, something that stores these blobs on disk for temporary purposes for release development. We're gonna configure one on disk today, but you can also use S3 for when you wanna publish these releases. So why are we doing this at all? And it's because we wanna add a compilation dependency. If you've written any code in Golang before, you know you need to compile this. How are we gonna do that? So we'll add a, a package, which will be a dependency for our source compilation. So we'll add Golang as a dependency in our release. This package will reference a blob. So that looks like this. We're going to clone a, a predefined package that the Bosch team has put together for you already. So we'll clone the Bosch package's Golang release. We'll get into our own release we're building, and we'll say Bosch vendor package. This will add that Golang package as a dependency for us to use later. <clears throat> so now in addition to our uh, our source file, we also have this package we've added. So this is still within our release and it's just a, a component of our release. And that package references this blob that we're going to use later. So now that we've got a dependency here that we'll eventually use, we need another package for our source code. And this is so we can tell Bosch how to actually compile and build the source code so we can run it later. Again, we'll use the CLI to scaffold this package out. We can say Bosch generate package and we'll call this hello server. Okay, so now we have two packages that we're dealing with. We have the hello server package I just made and we have that other Golang one, the one below it still. <coughs> Part of packaging with Bosch is to specify and define how to actually work with your source code. So part of this specification will call, uh, will give our package a name, which is hello server, which we already scaffolded. And we'll say that this package depends on another. So our package depends on the Golang package we already added. So now we'll be able to use this package while building our source code. And for our package, we're interested in the files in the source directory that end in .go. So you can use this glob pattern in many different ways for your source code too. So now we've uh, built up a little bit more of our package. We defined a dependency between the Golang package and our source package. And we've added this spec file, which is the purple. Okay, so I've talked about building source code, so let's finally get to that. So how do we do that? We, we're not gonna fill out this file called packaging, which is to actually build our source. First, we'll reference that Golang package I keep talking about. So this, we can just reference the package and that Golang package has a few special tools that the Bosch team has put together, which gives a nice compilation environment, which allows us to simply say, go build. So now we have our, our binary and that ends up just being in the same directory. So now we're gonna copy this to a well-defined location that Bosch gives us for later reference. So we'll be able to uh, touch our binary here and tell it to run. So as part of our source package now, or, or our package that we're building to actually compile our source code, we have this spec and packaging file now. So we're almost done. Well, great, that's really nice and stuff, but now with these, this package, how do we actually run it? We're actually, we've got it compiled, it's there, but how do we run it? So this is where our jobs come in. So the packages were responsible for making our source code and our blobs available to the release, 
and it's the job's responsibility to control how to run them. So jobs interact with packages, and they're responsible for handling requests like start and stop. And if you've ever run a Go app or a Node app, you run node app.js or go run whatever, and this is where that's specified. It's the how of how to run the code that's sitting in your Bosch release. It also re reacts to other lifecycle events. I've only mentioned start for now. Uh, there's stop, and there's a whole list of other ones that we'll go over in the end. But for Hello World, we'll keep with start. So to create our job, we can use the Bosch CLI as well. Run Bosch generate job yo. So our job's called yo. And it creates a set of familiar files um, under the jobs directory, under the yo directory. Uh, let's take a look at spec for now. Spec is similar to packaging, packaging spec. It's short for specification. It has a name. We'll call it yo. It has templates which is our scripts that handle the start and stop that I mentioned. It has the list of packages that this job needs and is going to use. And lastly, it has a set of properties. We're going to leave that empty for now because we don't need anything. But again, Rebecca will go over what kind of fun things you can put in there at the end. So now that we have our spec file, there's two other files that we need before this job is complete. Okay, so we've defined our job, but we need a little bit more in order to run our package still. So we'll get into job process control. So what I mean by that is on the VM when you're running your Bosch release, we'll need a way to start it, stop it, and monitor it in case it starts failing. So Bosch uses Monit to accomplish this on the VM for local processes. <clears throat> and then our scripts that we defined earlier in our templates are used as a start and stop program for Monit. Uh, later on when we deploy this release, uh, what actually happens is the director issues a start command to Monit and then Monit will actually start your job through the control script we already defined. So we've got this spec file now and this Monit file we have filled out. Continuing a job process control, what does that script look like to actually control our package? So this is where we connect the job to running our package. So for my control script here, I have start and I have stop. For start, we just kind of echo the PID or the process identifier of this um, shell script. And then we're actually going to now run our hello binary. So the var vcap package is hello server hello here the exec will actually start running our binary that we compiled earlier. For stop, we'll just simply kill it off and remove that PID file. Now we have these three files that are defining our job, and this is how you now will run the package. This control script is the one that controls our package running. Okay, that's actually all it is to build this first release. Seemed kind of like a lot, but it's a uh, not too bad if you go through it with us. So now our release is ready. How do we actually deploy it? So again, we're going to use the Bosch CLI to help us. But instead of scaffolding, we're going to use it to move files around. So we can start with the Bosch create release. And it takes a snapshot of what you have so far. You run Bosch upload release, and it moves that onto the Bosch director. So going back to our Bosch deployment um, diagram, we have the what that you put onto the Bosch director, and it takes it and creates a deployment out of it. One thing that I left out of this diagram is the how. And we call that the Bosch manifest. In the Bosch manifest is where you specify things like VM size, the number of VMs you want to use, some networking information, and that's the how. And it's usually written, or it has to be written in YAML. So for our Hello World, we'll have this simple YAML file that has a name. It specifies what releases you'll be using. We'll be using Hello World. And it specifies the jobs you'll be running. Uh, the last line here specifies instances. So this is one of the cool features of Bosch. You can configure things really easily to scale this up to like 10 servers uh, if you wanted to. So now that we have um, the what and the how, we're able to create our Bosch deployment by running Bosch deploy. So what's happening when you deploy Bosch? 
So since we define our packages through, or we have our blobs and source code defined through packages, Bosch puts that on your VM. And because we define our jobs, Bosch will start a job. And when the start command is issued, which is, happens by default when you do Bosch deploy, is actually able to start running your process. And that is a Bosch deployment with all the pieces in there. Did you guys get that photo? Okay. Okay, so now we have our very first release deployed, and if you were to actually uh, send a request to that VM, it would reply back with, yo, it does work, I did try it, it really works. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do with Bosch releases um, in the scope of a deployment, so we'll go through some of that now. First of all, you can actually deploy this release on any supported cloud now. This release, as you may have noticed in the what of that diagram Peter was showing, um, is a very portable piece of software now. You can re deploy this on any supported cloud. You can also share information between jobs of separate releases with something called Bosch links. So you can share things like maybe credentials between a database server and a web server without actually entering any credentials in your manifest at all. <coughs> One thing that can speed up deployments, if you know you'll be deploying over the same uh, operating system, is you can pre-compile your release for that operating system so deployments become faster. Another thing you can do is using the Bosch Process Manager, or BPM, you can containerize your jobs and add some isolation. In addition to that, you can react to more lifecycle events during the deployment process with more templates. We went over start today and stop, but you can do more. So during the deployment process, the uh, Bosch director issues a few more lifecycle events to the job. And you can optionally fill out templates for these if you so desire. So one such of lifecycle event is pre-start. So you might want to use this to create some directories or maybe gem install or something like that to prepare your software for running even more. And then in your template side on the left here, you can define a, a pre-start script. These have to be uh, well-named, well-defined. So on the uh, left side here, pre-start.sh, you can name that anything you want, but on the right side, that has to be um, well-defined, and that's in our documentation pages. There's a few more lifecycle events as well you can react to. Post start, post deploy, drain, and post stop. There's a new one coming as well called pre stop. Um, and this gives you better control over your software when you run it. That's the end of our session. So thank you very much for coming out. Uh, if you have any questions at all, join us on Slack at any time. If you have any questions right now about this session, uh, we'd be happy to help on the side. We find that's a little better for those kinds of questions. Um, and the documentation pages on the right here are a great resource for building your release even further. Thank you.